Well, that was some mid-January NBA basketball right there as the one seed in the West Timberwolves take 44 minutes to finally pull away from the worst team in basketball, the Detroit Pistons, who are now 4-37. and This game was played in Detroit, and the Timberwolves did not have a lot of effort, uh, especially the perimeter defense was pretty lax, especially from the starters. And we did some funky things matchup-wise. Well, I guess not funky. I guess it was that we went traditional, which was a shock to me, because we had Mike Conley guarding Jaden Ivey, and Ivy's just such an explosive, fast guard that I would have figured we'd want Anthony Edwards, who was questionable coming into this game, so maybe that's why he didn't have the matchup. Or Jaden McDaniels. Usually it's Jaden that's taking the best offensive threat on the team, which was Jaden Ivy for the Pistons, as there's no Cade Cunningham in this game. And uh, Mike didn't do the greatest job. Jaden Ivy has... Uh, 32 points, which ties his career high in this one. It's one of my main concerns about our Timberwolves defense is speed because the fast guards, we just don't have a great defensive matchup for them because Mike Conley, he scraps, he's a great defender, but he doesn't have that level of athleticism to keep up with ultra fast guards like Jay and Ivy and more worryingly like a deer and fox. And that's what's the bigger concern for me. And even off the bench, like Nikhil Alexander-Walker is another guard that's a weapon defensively for us, and he's a stud. Had some great fourth quarter plays in this one that helped kind of close this out a little bit too, or at least early in the fourth that made sure we still had a good cushion. Um, but he's more someone that takes advantage of his length, good timing, great pick and roll uh, navigation, but he doesn't have that burst of speed to stick with the insane athletes of this game, which Jay and Ivy is that. He's got incredible quickness. But that being said, it still felt like a game where just once the pride of the Wolves was going to kick in, that they would be able to pull away. It just took till the very end of the game to actually happen. However, after giving up 40 points in the first quarter to the Pistons, they would then give up only 22 in the next one, so they would have a, I believe, 8-point lead at halftime and they stepped things up a little bit more on that end and were able to score just about all game long without too much issue, getting into the paint, dominating there. I say that our big men just bully teams that are bad, and that was the case in this one. Again, Rudy Gobert was dominant. I mean, he, his offensive moves are getting better. Like, he's got some interesting stuff. I think that's back-to-back -back games where he gets a nice Euro step layup. He's got some decent post moves, it's just the touch that's absent for the most part, but he even had some decent hooks in this game that were going in, and I also liked when he just is like, you know what, screw this, I'm dunking. Oh, sorry, kitty cat, I've got someone on my lap. I should have <laughs> been a little nicer to the cat there. And speaking of cats, Carl Anthony Towns, my God, did he hoop in this one. Five for five on threes. He was dominant offensively as well. And I really want us to just give the absolute green light to Cat on shooting threes. I mean, he made every single one. We got to get more than five attempts from it, from him. And I feel like that's something that I just am constantly feeling with Cat in his game. And he even had some, like, tough pulls in this one or just where it's a light contest. There's a little bit of space and he's like, all right, screw it. I'll just pop it. And I want him to be like that just about no hesitation. One of those was an important fourth quarter three that really kind of ballooned our lead late in that one. Uh, also something that I noticed with Carl Anthony Towns that I loved, he was doing kind of his usual, all right, I'm going to post up on the wing, try to get this ball when I'm almost on the three-point line. He finally back cut on one of those plays, gets a delivery from Kyle Anderson, who had nine assists in this game, leading the team in assists for this one. And Cat uh, gets that back cut able to finish on it and I would like to see him mix that in more because he constantly is going to that wing post up which I don't like I want him in the middle of the floor and it drives me nuts when he does that but if he can mix in some back cuts and stop people that try to overplay him when he does that that could be good that could be good offense for us uh, other than that Jane McDaniels he's just the difference maker I feel like for this team when he can be the elite level defender that we know he's capable of and also be efficient and a threat on offense it unlocks everything we're just kind of 
without weakness just about it feels like at that point he was punishing in this one 23 points his footwork is spectacular around the rim and his three-point shooting is slept on it really is you saw a couple like step backs and tough threes in this one not just the kicks to the corner that he's able to get kind of late in the shot clock or after ball movement to close things out although he would have one of those that rims in and is just a dagger into the chest of detroit but uh, Jaden is just such a difference maker, and I've been really happy seeing a couple good games out of him. But he's just been super volatile this year, so hopefully we can get steady Jaden. And uh, if we do, we're a championship contender. We really are. Uh, other than that, Anthony Edwards, he had... Uh, I, I, I was legitimately maniacally laughing in my apartment here for a good like minute straight when he had that thrunk in the lane just launching from just what, what do you even call that probably midpoint in the lane and he just goes around and over a defender just thrunks that thing in uh i was just laughing nonstop. it was such an absurd hilarious play ant is so insane some of the plays he can make he had multiple threes probably three of them in this game which i think were all of his makes three for eight on threes uh, where it's just like, there's nothing a defender can do. It's like, just kind of off rhythm. He's just like, all right, I'm pulling this now. Oh, it's in. <laughs> Poor you. And uh, it wasn't one of his best games. He was complaining a lot to the officials. It's an interesting development with him, too, where normally he's given the, hey, when he's taking shots. Now he was saying, a ref, like every time. I think we had seven or eight, a refs. In the first half alone, he also got teed up in this game, uh, just doing that to a referee, essentially, one of the sucks. And he now has the seven technicals, which is third most in the NBA at this point. So that's something he needs to clean up. And his leaning more and more into just constantly complaining to the officials, I don't think it's a good thing. I really don't. But his free throw attempts have gone up significantly in this year. I just don't know if constantly pestering them and getting technicals like every other game is uh, the way to go. I don't think it is. His perimeter defense was pretty suspect through a lot of this one, too, as was that for a lot of the players, it felt like. It felt like we were just leaning on Gobert a ton, and he would have to help a bunch, which left a lot of decent looks for Jalen Duran and kept the Detroit offense churning. But... I mean, you can't expect ultimate effort in a game that's hard for them to get up for uh, just in this like midpoint of the season against a really poor team. They also are playing again tomorrow night in the second night of back-to-back -back against the Grizzlies at home. So, yeah, I bet motivation was lacking a little bit. They're playing another bad team tomorrow. I'll be in the building. Let's see how they do. Not much else to talk about this game. We got the win when we needed to. And I'm just happy about that, even though it wasn't too pretty. All right, peace out.